intense. Noah and I are going to show you how to rebuild Dynatrack Heavy Duty Ball Joints right on your JK. By doing this right on the car, we eliminate tools, time, and a lot of wear and tear on the end forgings that the ball joints are pressed into. In other words, we're going to rebuild them, leaving the bodies pressed into the end of the housing. This is a great feature and one of the number one right reasons why these are the best ball joints you can get. The first step to disassemble the ball joint is to get a pair of snap ring pliers and take this E-clip off. What you want to do is just use it as a fulcrum. It comes off just like that. Next step is simply take off the cage, use a one inch socket, Now that this cap has been removed, we can take the pin and the heim joint and knock it up and out. So now to remove this pin, take your old castle nut, not the new one, thread it in backwards so that you have a nice flat surface and it's gonna protect the threads. Find a small sledgehammer or ball peen. Remove the castle nut and extract the bolt. Now we've moved on to the disassembly. Take your old castle nut, thread it on backwards. We're just gonna use a inch and 3 16 socket or a vise, it's your choice. There you go. And for the reassembly, basically, it doesn't matter which way this heim joint goes, slip it back on same socket as we did before. The only difference here is as we tap down, you want it to stop a quarter inch before it bottoms out on the ball. Use a center punch and line it up with the grease fitting. Okay, let's take a look. And we are good, we are right on the money. So before we put our new pin and ball in, we wanna take this seal out. Best way to do that is find a socket that fits all the way down through. We're gonna use a 20 millimeter thin wall, tap and knock that guy out. If you don't have one of these, you can take a screwdriver, small pry bar, and pop that seal right out. Just like that. For the new seal installation, make sure that the rubber and snap ring, you can see right there, faces toward the grease or up toward the ball joint. Set that in there like that. Take our socket, line it up best we can. And you want to tap it till the seal is flush all the way around. So now that we have everything ready to go, our prep put a little bit of axle grease on it just to make things a little easier. Go ahead and set it right in. Now to get it to seat all the way, find a thin wall socket, one inch, You can tell it's seated all the way. You'll hear a pitch, you'll hear a change, you'll hear a definite bottom out because you can hear the, the vibrations going all the way through the axle and you can see that it's all the way flush. We're gonna put in our locking assembly. So when we removed this uh, threaded cap, it was in one piece. Sometimes they can be two, but that didn't happen during our disassembly. So we're gonna go ahead and just put this right back in. Okay. Now to set this, we're going to want to torque this down to 30 foot-pounds. That's it. The key thing to remember here though, if we look on the top here, we want to make sure that this inner locking tab and the outer one line up because the cage is going to sit between these. So you want to make sure that everything lines up so that retaining clip holds everything together. So now we're going to take our new cage and you may need to tap this with a hammer just to get it to seat a little bit. Not much, just a little tap on both sides. Now we can go ahead and install our new E-clip. There you go. So now we're gonna move on to the lower ball joint. First thing you wanna do, take your Allen key and take out these two small retaining pins. Okay, so to get access to the snap ring that's behind this boot seal, we're gonna have to remove this. Your kit's gonna come with a new seal, so we're gonna go ahead and just tear this apart. Yeah. 
Okay, so now that we have the boot off, we're gonna wanna take that snap ring out. Easiest way to do that, find a small pick, pair of pliers, compress the snap ring, come in behind it. There you go. Now that we, we have these screws out, we can take our small punch and tap a little bit there and there, and that should knock the heim joint out. So to take the pin from the heim joint apart, simply take the snap ring off, like so. Okay, so now that we have the snap ring off, we're gonna wanna remove the heim joint from the pin, set it in our vise, take our center punch, Reassembly, take our heim, put it back on, and just to start, we're gonna use this flat piece to knock it about halfway, then transfer it to place to go all the way through. Also, the, the bottom ball joint's a little bit different because it stops right on the bottom, so you don't have to worry about any gaps. Just hammer it until it stops. As you see there, we've got just enough room to put our snap ring back on. Just like that. Okay, so now that we have our pin and heim joint assembly ready to go, put a little bit of axle grease on it to help this go in. Just to help it along, give it a little tap. You wanna tap that in all the way until it bottoms out. Okay, so now that this is fully seated, we wanna take our C-clip. Make sure that it's seated all the way down and that the spring expands again. There shouldn't be any gap between the bottom of that heim joint and that C. When you wanna prep this boot, we wanna use Loctite 380 and there's an inner ring and an outer ring. We want to put glue on the outer ring. Don't have to apply a lot of pressure, just enough to put a nice clean bead on it. And then we go on and install it. Make sure it seats evenly all the way around. Run it on hand tight, as we need that glue to set for about three hours before it's driven. This way it'll apply pressure and keep everything seated for uh, the knuckle assembly. Now once that's the glue has been set, we can go ahead and reinstall our pins. And these just have to be hand tight. <laughs>